This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. The Intercepts revealed the Department of Homeland Security's expanding efforts to work with private tech companies to police online speech and shape online discourse. The Intercepts reporting is based on years of internal DHS memos, emails and documents. According to one internal document, the agency is focusing on a number of topics, including, quote, the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic and the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines, racial justice, U.S. with withdrawal from Afghanistan and the nature of U.S. support to Ukraine, unquote. The FBI has also played a key role in the effort. We're joined now by Lee Fong, who co-wrote The Intercept's investigation headline, Truth Cops, leaked documents outline DHS's plans to police disinformation. Lee, why don't you lay out exactly what you found and how you got these documents? Amy, thank you so much for having me. Good morning. Uh, earlier this week, we reported this story that shows the evolving mission of the Department of Homeland Security, uh, that uh, they're moving to police online discourse under the mantle of uh, fighting alleged disinformation and misinformation. Uh, this effort began in earnest in 2017, after uh, Russian interference in the 2016 election. Uh, there was kind of a dry run of efforts to uh, censor and influence uh, social media around the pandemic, around the 2020 election. But, as you mentioned, documents we obtained uh, from uh, litigation, from uh, public resources and from uh, whistleblowers uh, shows uh, the really massive uh, expansion uh, of this uh, mission uh, that uh, the DHS plans to weigh in on inherently political topics. Uh, again, as you mentioned, the uh, war in Ukraine, U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, the origins of, of COVID. Um, these are policy topics. Uh, these are areas of contentious debate. It's not clear why the government should be weighing in and giving us the official truth and, and censoring um, dissenting opinions. Uh, th these documents uh, raise uh, clear civil liberty concerns, concerns around uh, the First Amendment and if the government is trying to shape the kind of news we see. So, let's take one example, withdrawal from Afghanistan. Talk exactly about what you found. Well, we, we obtained a draft report of the Department of Homeland Security's quadrennial review. Uh, these are planning documents that shape uh, DHS's um, agenda, uh, their focus over a four-year period. It's basically a planning document that shapes the agency's agenda. And uh, the documents show that the department hopes uh, to focus on issues such as uh, the nature of U.S. support for uh, the war in Ukraine. Um, how they hope to do this is not clear. Uh, what they classify as disinformation or the truth is not clear. Um, we do know um, from, you know, uh, recent history, from uh, a long period of history, that the U.S. government has attempted to shape public opinion around contentious foreign policy issues, that the U.S. government has lied about our support. Uh, our, 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 um, the nature of U.S. support for wars in Vietnam, in Iraq, and Afghanistan, uh, why the government uh, sees itself as uh, the arbiter of truth here is, is really not clear, and, and how the government attempts will attempt to shape uh, discourse around the war in Ukraine again is not clear. So, if you could talk further about um, what exactly CISA is, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Act um, that Donald Trump signed into law, um, and also the Disinformation Governance Board that DHS eventually scrapped. That's right. Um, CISA, uh, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, is a sub-agency of DHS where a lot of this disinformation, misinformation, policing efforts are housed. Um, this was created by an act of Congress in 2018, signed into law by President Trump. If you look at news coverage around uh, the sub-agency, uh, it's focused around uh, protecting the homeland, uh, the critical infrastructure of the U.S. around water, around utilities, pipelines, um, kind of traditional um, infrastructure. But after being signed into law, uh, this uh, new uh, bureaucratic arm of DHS really got to work uh, focusing on disinformation and, and alleged misinformation uh, by claiming that um, uh, disinformation or in, any of these kinds of, of false information on social media uh, could pose a threat to the U.S. 
um, could, could uh, um, disrupt uh, critical infrastructure. Uh, so uh, these efforts uh, technically began under President Trump. Um, they've continued to expand. Uh, the, dis the Disinformation Governance Board, which was announced by uh, President Biden in, in April, uh, it faced immediate criticism as kind of an Orwellian uh, ministry of truth. Um, after kind of facing this criticism uh, from um, uh, both left and right, uh, Biden uh, shuttle, shuttered uh, this board in August. Um, but the documents that we report on show that um, the efforts to police social media live on under CISA, uh, which is a, a multi-billion dollar agency that, that meets monthly uh, with the private sector. Uh, they were uh, meeting regularly. Let me with, ask you uh, something, because we Gade. just have 20 seconds, Lee. Do you see CISA um, in the United States further emboldening or autocratic regimes like Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Turkey to force social media companies to repress um, their citizens? Look, every society faces disinformation campaigns, false information on social media. What we're seeing in closed societies, in autocratic societies, is an effort to suppress. Uh, freedom of speech, to suppress uh, social media, to suppress the press. Um, and in open societies, we should be countering it with more speech, with better speech. Um, the, the question is, uh, as we see across the globe this, this kind of crisis of, of disinformation, will the U.S. take a more uh, open society We're approach have to leave or it there. Uh, adopt the strategies of we'll more uh, closed autocratic regimes? We'll link to your piece, Truth Cops. That does it for our show. Check Thank you out for having our me. Election night coverage. I'm Amy Goodman.